Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and you join me here at the Media and Journalism Center in Peterborough. Now this video for tipscrawl.com was inspired by one of the students here who asked if it was possible to make it look like we're looking through a viewfinder of a camera. Well, we were using Premiere, but we're not going to use Premiere here. Of course, we're going to use Photoshop. And with the new video capabilities in CS6, this really should be a breeze. So let's jump in and see how we get on. OK, so here we are. We're in Photoshop. And the first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and put on this grey layer. Now, this serves two purposes. One, we can see the screen ornaments a little uh, easier. And secondly, we don't have to look at my ugly mug throughout this tutorial. OK, let's have a look at uh, very quickly at the layers that I've put on. This is not what the tutorial is all about. Um, we're going to be actually looking at the recording indicator and how we animate that. The rest, well, they're just simple drawings. So let me just quickly take you through what I've got. Um, first of all, my corners layer, uh, just an outline of a kind of screen safe area, really. We find that in the old types of cameras. Next uh, up is a cam icon, which I didn't like, so I switched that one off. Then a black and white layer. So everything through the viewfinder, we often see through black and white. It isn't nowadays. Obviously, with the camcorders, it's uh, it's all in color. But you know, we uh, as viewers, we like to see black and white through a viewfinder for some reason. It's kind of traditional way we understand. Next up is a battery. So I've got two layers here that make up the battery, the outline and how full the battery is, which means I can control T on that one for transform and I can make the battery full, more fuller was what I was going to say. We can make it more full um, and less full, should we wish. Up from that is the date and then the time remaining. Again, two layers on this one, uh, just so we didn't have to alter the position of the REM or anything like that. We can just alter the time. And then our recording button, which is just a red dot. One more layer above that, which is this uh, reference photograph that I took with my camera phone, just so as I had a reference of what's actually on a screen these days, because I couldn't do it from memory. OK, but that's not being used at all. What we do need to do, though, is going to have a look at this recording layer, though. And that's the one that's animated. So let's go and have a look down in our timeline. Let's twirl this one open. And you can see all my keyframes that make up the animation for flashing this red dot. Now don't panic, you don't have to uh, put in each one of these keyframes, but there is a knack to adding keyframes and copying and pasting keyframes, which we'll have a look at right now. So let's take away these. I'm just going to draw a marquee around them and press delete and away they go. So I'm down here on my recording layer and I've got my opacity. Now I want to go right back to the beginning. And I'm going to tell Photoshop that I'm going to animate this layer by clicking on this stopwatch here, which uh, adds a keyframe. Bink. And there we are. We're at 100% opacity. Now I'm going to zoom in using the mountains down the bottom here. So let's just click in a few times. So I've got a couple of seconds on, on screen. That's probably too much. And then I'm going to move my current time indicator to about half a second, which in my case is 12 frames. Now I know that I'm on 12 frames because of this indicator down the bottom left hand corner here. Uh, it tells me where I am. So 12 frames out of the 20 frames, 25 frames per second. Uh, so I'm roughly about halfway. And I'm going to add a keyframe in there. So now I've told Photoshop that the opacity of this layer is 100% there and 100% there. So there should be no changes. Next, I'm going to just click on this button here just to advance one frame. So there I am, I'm on frame 13. And I'm going to reduce the opacity to 0%. There we go. So in that one frame, it goes from 100% to 0% opacity. So all the way on and all the way off. Then I'd like it to fade back in to one second. So right here, let's put this back up to 100%. Now you'll notice I haven't added a keyframe. I'm just changing, I've still got the button pressed down by the way. I'm just changing the opacity and when I release the mouse, you can see it puts in a keyframe for me. So any changes you make, it will add the keyframe in automatically, which is quite helpful. So now I've got all the way on, blinks off, and then it fades slowly back in. So from half a second to a second, it goes from 0% opacity to 100% opacity. OK, let's put in one more of these. Let's go and put this back in. In fact, let's not confuse ourselves. Let's take this one away. Just uh, clicked on it and pressed delete. Let's go back to one second exactly. 
I'm going to draw a marquee around these three keyframes, which are the only keyframes that we need to make up our flash. Right click actually on the keyframe anywhere else along here, and it will not work. You see, I'm clicking around, it won't work. I can only do it on the keyframes themselves. So I have to highlight all of them and then click on any of these keyframes to copy. Then right click again on any of the keyframes and click paste. And you'll see that it pastes it down wherever the current time indicator is. Okay, this time let's highlight both seconds and we'll copy those. Again, it doesn't matter which keyframe. Let's move along to two seconds. And again, it doesn't matter which keyframe, paste. And now I've got four seconds worth as quickly as that. Now zooming back out using the smaller of the two mountains. And I can highlight all of that. Right click, copy, and then take this along to four seconds. Now you can see I'm finding it a bit more difficult to land exactly on four seconds. Just about managed to there. And paste. But we don't need to worry about that too much. Let's zoom back out. And this time I need to find eight seconds and it's going to get even more tricky the further I pull out. Well, that's okay because where we looked at where we were, where the current time indicator was, we can double click on that and we can put eight colon zero zero. So that's eight seconds and no frames. Press OK or press Enter or click OK. And then again, any keyframe and paste. Good. Now we've got all these coming up. It's uh, Highlight all those, right click copy, and where do we want to be this time? 12 seconds ish. Now, as, as well as double clicking on it, I can use a scrubby slider so as I can, I'm clicking and moving the mouse left and right, and I can try and position it there. there I find this even more difficult because I'll just, there we go, sometimes I'll just suddenly get a little twitch in my hand and I'll go zooming off. Right click, paste, and there we go. Um, don't need many now, do we? Um, let's do them all anyway, just so we know where we're at. Copy. And this time we need 24 seconds. Not even close, look, three seconds off. And so let's just, here we go. And then we can right click and paste. And there we have it. If we zoom right the way out, we can delete any of the ones that we went over. Just as easy as that. Best to have too many than too little. Maybe one more. Oh, a couple more we need to get rid of. No. One more. There we are. Okay, so now if we go back to the beginning, I'll click on this button here, and we can press play, and we can see my button nicely pulsating for us. And there we are. It's as simple as that. We did that 30 seconds in no time at all, really. And of course, now we've got 30 seconds worth of pulsing. We could then copy and paste that. We'd have a minute. Once we've got a minute, we'll copy that a couple of times, and before you know it, you've done an hour's worth of of blinking buttons, if you excuse the phrase. And there we are. That's how to make it look like you're looking for a viewfinder using Photoshop CS6. I would like to thank Anna Whiston, David Lane and Chris Midwood for their help in filming the introduction to this podcast. Many thanks to you and to everybody at the Media and Journalism Centre. And there we are. That's it from me. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye bye for now.